sitting. I didn't bring a hard copy, so I'm reading on my phone, which I haven't ever done like this before. So thank you. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for the opportunity, Sage, for Sorry. not reading. <laughs> and Dolly for inviting me. If I had known I was going to read, I would have done something with my hair. <laughs> it looks beautiful. <laughs> I haven't brushed in a few years. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the thing that comes after the thing that I read. <laughs> the last time I read it, Bird Tongue, and my um, four year old narrator was at the beach with her father. And um, so I'm starting with the 50-year-old looking back. It wasn't until I was 50 years old, after the lid came off my shit, that I realized my mom had a plan to leave us. I was sitting in my therapist Nadine's office talking about the day my father got so excited about seeing that pelican. It was the first time I tried to remember how that day went. My mother had put two cans of beer in the snack bag she packed for us. She knew that my father would come home when the beer was gone, but before he was drunk. At four years old, I didn't know that my mother would never pack a beer for my father. I mean, I remember she never bought beer when she went to the grocery store, and my dad always complained about that. On that walk home from the beach, inside my four-year-old head, I was rooting for my father, for talking without slurring, for behaving how my mother wanted him to. If my father would just quit getting drunk and my brothers would just be quiet, everything would be fine. At four years old, I couldn't tell you this, but I knew it. This is how alcoholism gets inside a family. Like a tree grows up around the story of a nail pounded into its trunk. A story happens, it marks a person, a family, and that person or family acts a certain way because of that story. My dad's alcoholism got inside of me so that I became the stories of my mother and my father. So fucking hard to shake that shit off. I mean, their stories go inside your head and your body, and because you're you, you cook their stories in a whole new way that they don't even look like their stories. This is how I spent a bunch of my life having no sense of who I was. I believed I was who my mother said I was. Stupid, a slut, a whore. Like my grandmother told my mother she was those things, and my great-grandmother told my grandmother she was those things. Everything was about your cunt and not your brain with the women in my family. I took the stories they gave me of myself and cooked them up inside me to make my own rendition. Sure, I led with my pussy, but I'll tell you something. I was not ashamed of leading with my pussy like they were. That's how I took their old story passed down from woman to woman in my family and climbed up out of the shit of their tired old woman hating stories. At 50, I understand you never really shake that shit off. I learned to see myself starting up the same old stories and the falseness of the old stories handed down to me by my family. Now, most of the time, I can choose not to be their story of who I am. I'll tell you something. Derailing the old stories of yourself that your family gave you, that ain't nothing. My little two-year-old brother Danny stands on the cement porch in a t-shirt, his tiny thingy hanging there. That's what me and my dad see when we walk up to our little white house on 13th Street in Seal Beach, right after my dad told me about how there were lots of pelicans once. My big brother Patrick jumps off the porch, his brown Bermuda shorts, orange and brown stripes of his t-shirt. He runs at me and my dad, his voice loud. Dad, I put daddy's poopy diaper in the toilet. My dad's hand let go of my hand, walking up to Danny without stumbling around like he does when he's drunk. 
He leans his fishing pole up against the house and wraps his arm around Danny's butt. Poop we didn't see until my dad's arm was in it. My dad doesn't even... <clears throat> My dad doesn't even care. He says poop is part of babies. Me and Patrick wrinkle our noses. Patrick's green eyes at me, his one front tooth missing. We laugh. Dad, up to three steps. Danny's dark eyes over Dad's shoulder. He already took Dad's sunglasses off. Dad's big steps across the porch disappeared through the open door. His voice inside, where's your mom? She said, I'm big enough to watch Danny, Patrick says. My big brother always gets to help mom take care of Danny. Me right behind Patrick, following my dad into the bathroom. Is she at the store? Dad asks. Danny on the long yellow counter by the sink. One of dad's hands on Danny's legs, poop on the inside of dad's elbow. A smear of brown like finger paint by the sink. Poop all over the place. Dad's other hand in the diaper drawer. What a mess. You're a poopy mess, Danny. Danny doesn't make a sound. He pokes Dad in the eye, trying to put the sunglasses back on his head. Patrick already squeezed past my dad at the other end of the bathroom. The window far up above, up above his auburn hair. The yellow curtain all bright with sun. Green eyes at me, his pointer finger at the toilet. His lips like he ate something sour. I'm on my hands and knees, scrunched up close to the wall behind Dad, barely enough room to get by. Black hair on Dad's arm, his hand in the rubber pants drawer right down there by me. Up on my feet, me and Patrick, the diaper with poop floating in the toilet. My big brother pinches his nose, so I do too. Him and me, trying to keep our laughs in, snorting sounds coming out of us. Patrick unpinches his nose, so I unpinch mine too. Patrick, where's your mom? My dad asks. She said you'd be home pretty soon. She's at the grocery store. Mom made pudding for dessert, Patrick says. Chocolate, like Danny's poop. Dad laughs. So do me and Patrick. Thank you.